Oh my God. Well, we've been setting up this equipment for about two hours now. <laughs> yes, we have been. Okay, so we're in Hialeah and we're, where, are we, where are you taking me, dude? I'm taking you all the way to 49th Street, the central uh, street of Hialeah. It's like the central marketplace. Oh, I love it. And with that said, I have a question for you. Are you an Uber driver? Are you my Uber <laughs> driver today? <laughs> <laughs> I guess today I am. Today I No, but seriously, do you do Uber? Did I hear that right or is that a rumor? That you do Uber? It's just a rumor. I don't do Uber. Oh my God, it's just a rumor. Where did I hear that, that you do Uber? I don't know. So the rumor comes from me taking my friends to places in my car because my car, as you know, is fitted with a wheelchair space in the back of me um, as well as my wheelchair space mm -hmm. for the driving but since you see uh, on the back of me there's a lot of space mm -hmm. so I take yeah. my friends with me everywhere you know and when they call me sometimes because they want to go to a place a specific place they just they just pay for my gas and, and I'll take them and that's why they might be calling me the Uber or something <laughs> Well, that is the rumor ever. Uh, but today you're my Uber driver. Also, because my name is Ever, and it's pretty close to Uber. <laughs> Maybe my Ever driver. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ever. So, thank you for driving me. Thank you for riding. <laughs> thank you for riding here. <laughs> so I have some questions, and again, you know, I'm trying to um, show our audience how wonderful and creative you are first of all and don't roll your eyes i saw rolling your eyes <laughs> i saw saw you <laughs> because i mean basically you have all this equipment in your van you have the hands control and all that but before we get into that i want to ask you who is ever who is ever tell me about yourself well i'm just a cuban kid <laughs> living in Hialeah All right. with a lot of dreams I'm a dreamer yeah. yes I don't stop dreaming I don't, I, I don't stop trying to learn how to do something new mm -hmm. all the time and I've been known for doing so many things that right now I don't even know what I do anymore <laughs> <laughs> people keep on asking me what do you do for, for work and, and I keep on saying to people I've I got like 50,000 different works you just come for one of them and I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, and that's awesome, first of all. Second of all, you said you're a Cuban kid, so we're, so I, I'm assuming, of course, you were born in Cuba. Uh, how old were you when you came to the US? I was 18 years old. Oh, so last year. <laughs> no, I'm actually turning 34 next May. Oh, and you said May, what was the day? May 2nd. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> but, so you came as an older kid then to the US. Uh, do you speak English? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Am I speaking Chinese here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Bueno, pero I'm asking, I don't know. So how, how was that change though, you know, coming from Cuba? Oh. You come with your parents, T tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the beginning was kind of traumatic. Um, I didn't know any English and I was put right in high school at 11th grade. I had done 12 already in Cuba, but the, my, my, my papers were not here. So I had to do 11th all over again. And it was kind of difficult because at that, at that moment, like 15 days after I started high school, they put me to do the FCAT test. Oh. And you know how, was, how, how, how hard that was. And yeah, it was kind of a trauma for me at that point because I didn't know any English. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't do any good on that test. Yeah. I, I did good on the mathematics test because mathematics is, is a universal language. But right. with the English one, that I had to take it like four times to actually pass it. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it was it was hard. Struggle. Yeah, I had a lot of struggle. Mm -hmm. Well, I can only imagine being 18, high school, and moving to a new country, new language, 
new everything um probably that was but when when do you feel that shift or that moment when you said you know what i'm gonna do this i'm gonna i'm gonna conquer the world yeah that was uh when graduation was coming uh -huh. for the second grade for the i'm sorry for the 12th grade and mm -hmm. um, i had to pass the fcat no matter what yeah so i started training myself in english like really really hard i mean something that a school never did to me i had to do it my, on my own mm -hmm. i i also did some crazy training which is watching a movie like 32 times just to understand the whole uh language and and the way the the american people think you know to understand the way that they write their books and and the way that they interpret life i had to understand all of that just to pass the test so yeah at that moment i realized that i had to focus and yeah that took me through the test and, and i passed it with minimum points but i did pass it <laughs> you know and that's a great accomplishment right yeah I guess. oh my god <laughs> you know what they say to me that some some people uh, that are born in this country sometimes never even pass it so that was huge so 33 can you tell me which movie was that 33 times <laughs> yes the movie is called a night's tale oh never watched it never seen it a nice tale a night yeah. a night a night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so one of the questions i i wanted to ask you because when did we meet that's you know i've been thinking and i guess i guess i don't know i'm getting older i know that and i don't remember can you tell me I'm pretty sure we met around 2007, Seven? something like that. Oh, eight. No, well, you, you, I started in 2011, so it with cannot M be 2009. With MDA? <laughs> with MDA. Okay, at, at that year, yeah, you, you told Probably. me it was at the UN clinic, UN, UN clinic mm -hmm. and you told me I am your new uh, <laughs> assistant here or something, and I was like, what, really? Oh my God, nice to meet you, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So 2011, so that's eight years ago. Yeah, right when you started. Oh, look at Hialeah. Busy traffic, people. Let me tell you. That's right. Okay, so we, let's go back. Yeah. And again, this is. At least we, we, are, we don't have to stop because of the train. You bet. <laughs> that could be a little <laughs> interesting. But, uh, okay, so 2011, we met clinic. And then for some reason, we didn't see each other. Maybe a clinic or anything. And then. Somehow we got connected again. Yes, yes, because I am a really bad patient. <laughs> You're a really bad patient and stubborn, I'm assuming. Yes, I am. I don't like to see the doctors that much. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably didn't go to the doctor for a few years, so then I didn't see you for a while. That might be the reason. <laughs> but then we connected back. But for, for some reason, I think I saw, and again, it's all about social media that you do DJing. So you do DJ music, you do a lot of things ever, right? And for some reason I said, you know, let me contact Ever, my friend, and see if, if he's, maybe he's able to, to be the DJ for, for our Miami Muscle Walk. And that was last year. That was an amazing thing. I mean, one of the best times of my life. Are you serious? Oh, yes. It's gonna make me cry. Right, or on my car. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me why. What, what do you feel? Why? Why do? Why, why do? You, I, I didn't know. Tell me. Thing is, when you do something to give to others, like like even in the Bible, it says that when you give, you feel more happiness in your heart, growing than when you are getting paid. That's the way I see it. And I hope people understand me uh, because when I do something like that and you see the people so happy and you, you see how they react to what you're doing, to your work, to the things that you have been doing for so many years and you actually perform in a, in a good way, that is what completes my heart. And that's something I love. I love that. And I think that goes with, you know, I was gonna ask, you know, 
you are so positive and I don't think I've ever seen you mad or anything. I always see you and you're smiling. So you know, where do you get that positive attitude towards life? Well, um, I don't want anybody to get mad now, but I think it comes from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, mother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's always told me that if your problem doesn't have a, a solution, why hurry? And if he has a solution, why hurry? That's the way he says it to me and I guess he's been stuck with me for a long time now. I do get mad, don't get me wrong. <laughs> In Hialeah traffic gets me mad all the time. <laughs> I can see that, I can see. Oh my god, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's, you know, one of the things I've noticed and I since I met you, I mean, I've always admired that, you know, I mean, happiness, look, you know, towards life. Look at this guy, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Hello. Yeah, mm-hmm, sure, whatever. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Real life. In Hialeah, we're riding with Ever. That's the way you're driving, Hialeah. <laughs> In MIA, this is how we drive. So let's talk about driving. And I'm sure a lot of people want to know, you know, some people know, and it, especially the young adults, I know you went to camp uh, back, I think it was 2015 or 20, yeah, 2015. And one of the kids there, I remember him, and he was so curious. He wanted to see your van and how you're driving because I, I want to do the same. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was, um, uh, uh, I think Rodriguez is his last Ruben. name. Ruben. Ruben? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, uh, he really liked the idea of driving. Yeah. And this is something I encourage everybody to do. Can you, can you tell me more You know about the hands control and how do you, how do, you do all this? And it's amazing. Well, You're a great driver, by the way. First of all, look at the wheel. It moves by itself. I don't have to move it. Oh. This is amazing. It gives a lot of independence. Yeah. And just to think, just think of it this way. You don't have to ask anybody to take you someplace. When you are in a wheelchair, most of the time you have to ask people to take you places. But when you drive a car, you just go ahead and take the car and drive. That's awesome. I mean, if I want to drive out of the state, I just drive out of the state. People can't say anything, you know. It's like, some some people tell me, hey, uh, how far have you been? And I've been like, Orlando. I've been to Okeechobee Lake plenty of times. I love that place. Um, people go like, but you, do you go alone? <laughs> Do you bring somebody with you to help you and stuff like that? I mean, with the car, don't get me wrong, I need help with a lot of things. But with mm -hmm. the car, I don't need any help because the car is is my independence. It, it does most of the things for me. Yes. It doesn't drive by itself. I have to guide it, but it'll, it'll go places. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's amazing, the feeling, that just the, the independence that, that you get when you drive. Now, the... How do you learn how to drive? Did it take a long time to try to figure out and the joystick and all the whistles and different things? Yes, yes, it, it, it takes uh, some time because you have to, first of all, you need to get a, a person that comes and teaches you mm -hmm. the basics of driving in, in this type of car. You know, it, it's, it's an instructor, in my case was... Uh, Is that an occupational therapist, I think, or no? He's an instructor, okay. uh, paid by DR. Okay. And the the fact of the matter is that uh, it, it was by the at that time it was only one in the state of Florida. I don't know how many there are right now, but this instructor was amazing. I mean, he had bands totally standard. He could switch the band to different types of disability. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the way that he he can handle all that stuff. And I think I drove three of his bands. Oh. It's amazing. It's amazing. I started driving, a, it was a big, one of those uh, lift mm -hmm. bands, one mm -hmm. of those uh, huge bands. Yes, that yes, the STS yes, uses. yes, those are big, yeah. And then uh, we switched to minivans, uh -huh. which I drive right now because it's the best. It's, yeah. It's perfect fit, mm -hmm. 
and you don't have to go that big. Mm -hmm. Especially with the gas prices. Yes. Oh. But um, so basically, it took a little bit, and then you were off to a wonderful, independent life. Yeah. That's, that was the whole purpose at the, at the, at the, at the time. And yeah. Right now, we are so happy. I mean, I am so happy that every day oh. I can just go out, do so many things. I can buy my own groceries, you know, yeah. in my car. I don't have to call STS or or even ride the public transportation, which is not a bad thing because I learned about addresses mm -hmm. riding on the public transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, using the public transportation, I once went all the way to West Palm Beach. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Believe me, I've been all around. Oh. And I encourage people to actually ride it in order to learn about addresses and coordinates like for example like you need to know where the west is where the east is all that stuff yeah and then venture into driving because you don't want to drive you hear that out of the blue you hear that yeah very interesting because you kind of started investing in, in learning first and then you went on and then now we're here now you're using that joystick, I can see it. Is that the, what is that? Like that, is that the? This joystick, when you push it back, you brake. Ah, see, I know. When you push it forward, you As press the gas. Press the gas, so it goes forward. Oh. And when you turn it to the right, you turn it to the left. It's the wheel. The wheel goes to the right and to the That's left. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. See that? Wow. Right now I'm pressing back, you see? Right, pressing back. And uh, at the same time I'm pressing right, so the wheel turns. Mm. See that? Yeah. You let go, the car goes. See that? Yeah. Um, you know, I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Karina, you've been around. I, I know, but I haven't seen that specifically. And I, well, I think I have driven, you know, right in, right in, I've ridden before with somebody but not as close I think okay <laughs> I guess we're close now guys we're very close we're very close and by the way I learned something about ever all of his his equipment and his microphone and his cameras he call them the girls oh my god yes 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 and then he said something about oh yeah he's pretty awesome and it was a, a guy what is that all about mm -mm, mm -mm. Well, that was a microphone. <laughs> that was the microphone. And I hope it works. <laughs> we shall see. All right, so where are we? We're on 49th and something. Um, 5th. And 5th. 5th Avenue. Oh, 5th Avenue. Mm -hmm. So is this the, the center of that area? Yep. Mm -hmm. The center of commerce. Commerce? Is that what, how you say? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> see, my English is not that good sometimes, but yeah. So we're gonna stop somewhere specifically and then we'll turn around or yeah, yeah. you tell me. But go. one more thing I wanna say. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit about the Miami Mass Walk and we're in the midst of recruiting teams and try to, you know, make the walk this year as big as possible. And the greatest MDA event in the Miami area and the Broward area ever. Um, so ever like ever yeah, like you. Me, that's me, guys. That's me. <laughs> so uh, the the one thing is the the date of the the walk. It's Saturday, October twelfth, and it's gonna be in the Miami area. Um, and uh, we really would love for the community to join us, create teams. There's a website. So if you are on Facebook, you like social media, Facebook. It are you know go to the our our page, our page www what is it facebook.com forward slash mda south florida so you just look mda south florida and the links is there the link is there sign up come support i know ever will be there but i like to have ever tell you why will you do it why why will you join us please tell the audience I really appreciate what MDA has done for us all these years, ever since I came from Cuba. And there was this girl that was working at the clinic at this, 
at this time it was 2004 and she saw me and she recognized me not because of my face but because of my muscles she knew I had muscular dystrophy it's like it's like you Karina when you see a guy like me with muscular dystrophy you can tell you can tell right away that that person has muscular dystrophy and ever since that happened I have received so many good news like let's say the summer camp that is something that people don't understand sometimes but for us as, as, a, as a person with a disability to be able to get out of the house and go to a place like this where love is all around you have no idea huh, what that means to us I mean that was if not the best the second best or the third best week of my life guys you have to understand that is amazing the way we feel the in the I mean we are not with the family anymore we are like doing something for ourselves you know with some of the people that we just we just met and the way they treat us it's like like learning to trust in humanity all over again <laughs>